I'm here with Courtney. I have a shop on Ruby Lane called Chapel Hill Vintage Jewels. But today we're here to talk about five things to know about Hobe jewelry. The first thing that we're going to talk about is some company background on Hobe. And if you had a chance to watch my Regency um, video, if you remember, Regency was only producing its jewelry from like 1950 to 1970. And Hobe is completely different than that. Hobe actually started in Paris in 1887 um, with Jacques Hobe, who was a master goldsmith. So that jewelry was done in precious metals and precious gems. And then his son, William, came to the United States and he really brought that brand to the United States in about 1927. The company was called Hobe Say Limited, that's Say French, and their offices were in New York City. And William was also a master craftsman. So it, Hobe has a really rich history and the jewelry spans a very long period of time and in fact, Hobe is still producing today. It is not under the Hobe family, and I don't know the details of what's going on with the jewelry today, but my understanding is it's still, it's still there. Um, I, I said that William brought this to, brand to the United States, and one of the first assignments that he had, even before he opened the company, was that he was making costumes and jewelry for Siegfried Follies. Um, that's kind of their their legacy and you know in the 40s and the 50s um, They had a lot of success with Hollywood movies and Hollywood film stars like Betty Davis and Ava Gardner Who were all wearing Hobe jewelry so very well thought of? Um, you know Very couture oriented from from the get-go um, I want to switch gears and talk a little bit about uh, designs and design patents. Um, we're going to look at this book, which is Costume Jewelry 202. I have showed you these books before, um, and, and always in the back of my videos, you're going to see a list of all the references that I talk about, whether it's it's a book or whether it's a web reference. So, in this in this uh, Costume Jewelry 202, which is uh, by Julia Carroll. It has a list of design patents from William, and these design patents cover the years from 1939 to 1949, and William actually had 108 design patents. Now, the great thing about that is if you are lucky enough to find some of the early pieces, a lot of them were done in sterling, then you could actually go to the US patent site and you could find that design and it will tell you exactly when that was created. So let me show you an example of what that would look like because what I did was I took a design patent number and then I looked it up on the patent site, which is really an easy thing to do, but remembering this is a design patent. So this is an example of one that William would have created in, let's see, this one's 1949, and it's a design for a necklace. There are a lot out there, and what Julia does in her book is lists all of them on this page and several other pages to show you what all the patents were. So all you'd have to do is take that number or you can do a, a more customized search on the patent, but that'll tell you it's another way of dating jewelry, and it's unique to Hobe in the sense that not all designers patented um, their designs, but Hobe did for the most part. Now, does that mean that every single piece of jewelry that you're gonna see from Hobe has a patent number? No, because they bought also from what's called jobbers in the industry. And that is that jobbers would have designs that they did and they'd take them to different um, jewelry companies and they'd select them and then they, they'd put their name on them. So not all Hobe will be patented, but if you're a collector of bows, 
for example, bow brooches, most of those are in there. Most of them for, are from William. In nine, and, and the only variation to that is in 1948, some of, the, some of the design patents were done by his wife, Sylvia, who was part of the company at that point in time. So that's a little history. There's a lot of history and a lot of study. Um, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. So for number two, we're going to talk about the markings. And just like I said, there is so, there's such history and, you know, in this company and starting from the late, you know, 1800s, you have a lot of potential markings for Hobay. Now that doesn't mean you're going to find all of these, but in, in some of them I don't have because the pieces that are really, really old are very, very difficult to find and very expensive. So if you just look on this side, it shows you some of the potential and the years, and this will be part of the presentation and part of the back of um, this video series. But it shows you, you're gonna see, it's, it's always gonna say Hobay, so that makes life pretty easy, but you're gonna see Hobay and Hobay with a copyright mark, probably more than you'll see anything else. There's also a whole list of sterling markings so bottom line is my recommendation for markings is if you find a piece that's Hobay, the very best source you can go to is on the web called Illusion Jewels. And you can look up all of the markings. It'll give you examples of all of them because people from all over the world submit to that site when they find a marking that's not there. So you'll, it's a comprehensive list of all the possible Hobay markings. Okay. We're gonna just, I'm just gonna show you a couple examples of the markings because we've already talked about them. These pieces are pieces of 50s, 60s, 70s, probably into the 80s. But this um, one I think is just stunning, very art deco looking, came with you know the, the earrings to match. It's just the crystal rhinestones and purple rhinestones. But this one has a hang tag, if you can see that, that says Hobay right on it. Now, the good part is there is also a cartouche on the back uh, closure that also says Hobay. So if that got you know, lost in the process, it still would be clearly identified as Hobay. And in the back of this teardrop um, necklace, you can see the cartouche that has Hobay. And that's what it looks like. Sometimes it's stamped directly onto the metal. Um, and I have some like that as well, but this is just a couple of examples of the ones that you're very likely to find these days. Okay, for number three, we're going to talk about beads. And uh, Hobain just had some incredibly unique and detailed um, beading that they used in their in their designs and the first example I want to show you is this one that's pink and an off-white color um, for a couple of reasons uh, first is you know take a look at the beads the little rondelles that you'll see in between used as spacers um, and also this expandable bracelet very very much a whole bay design very easy to wear and fun to wear. And then you can see sometimes these are called cha-cha too, but also on the on the earrings that match it. Um, so just an example of the expandable bracelet, the, the sets of, of Hobay that are still available on the market today. I bought this one probably this year um, as opposed to having some of these for, for longer than that. Um, and, and both on eBay and Etsy and on Ruby Lane. Um, and in my own shop, I have, I have quite a bit of Hobay available for sale. Um, the second one I wanted you to look at is this one that used black, the black and the pearl. Great set, I believe, of jewelry. You can wear it, you know, all the time. Everybody likes black and white, but if you look, you're going to see these little details of like these little black beads with polka dots. And then this one uses the expandable bracelet as well. And it doesn't have the little dangles like the other one does. But it's a similar design, very Hobay. You can still find this stuff today. This set, the black set, 
would be much less expensive than this set is because of the dangles and the details of all of the beads that this one uses. It's just a more popular design and, and you know, gets into, I'm going to say like the 200 to $250 range um, in today's market. So here's a couple other examples just to show you of, of some of the unique beads and really striking beads that Hobe used in the designs. These again, these are our sets that are probably, you know, 50s to seven, 1950s to 1970. But this is um, uses these rondelles. Again, those are the tiny little round ones that have the rhinestones all the way around. And then these little um, molded beads are called sugar beads. And then you have this blue set, which has these flat black and also kind of this Japan look in it. And the last one is this, which is a really unique piece. And I just found this recently and, and I really like it. It's definitely, you know, you can tell from the, the pendant on it, it's, it's Egyptian revival style, but it uses molded faux carnelian and, and jade beads on it. And I just think it's stunning. So hopefully that's just an example of some of the, you know, styles that they created using beads. All right, number four, we're going to talk about some of their rhinestone examples. And, and this is, a, you know, a complete set. But what I want you to really note in this, it's, it's a very striking design and the detail that's in the design. You have these double rows of baguette rhinestones and then these large rectangular center stones that alternate between light blue and a nice uh, cobalt or royal blue. This one is a full set. It's all signed Hobe. Um, and I think it's just a stunning example of, of their rhinestone. This one is available on my Ruby Lane uh, shop. Let me show you another one. This is, a, 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 again, a drop design. This is actually a set that I wear myself when I get dressed up. I just love it. I think the teardrop designs um, on, on all, of the, all of the pieces, and it's all, uh, again, marked Hobe. Now, the other thing about Hobe is they also created these gorgeous purses so that the, the frame of the purse is all in rhinestones and crystals. Not easy to find, but they're out there. And they're, they also did jewelry boxes and some other um, accessories, which are all enhanced with their rhinestones. So they have some really beautiful rhinestone, um, rhinestone jewelry. For number five, we're going to talk about um, poured glass. And in this example, I want you to understand this, this set is, again, this is what I would call very difficult to find. Um, it is done in all poured glass. So this entire design all the way down here is all glass as is uh, as are the beads on, on the necklace uh, chain. And this one has the earrings to match, but just, you know, just to show you, look at the detail in that design. I don't have a year on this, all of it's signed. Um, of all of the things that I've showed you today, this one um, probably is the one that I paid the most dearly for, um, but I just thought that the set was just exquisite. So if you just look at all those little teardrop, all done in glass. Um, you know, easy to wear when you're dressed, easy to wear the necklace and the earrings, but the bracelet scares me a little. I'm afraid I bang it into something and, and crack it. But it's lived this long, so it probably would last anyway. All right, I'm going to switch and I'm going to talk about some opaline uh, rhinestones. So this one, very long hangs all the way down the front of a vision this with just a nice black plain black dress um, and uses these tiny little rhinestones in all of these that are an opaline type stone now on this set 
This is not a marked Hobe. But I have seen the exact same set that is marked Hobe. Now, I said earlier that Hobe uses used jobbers. So some of the designs that they actually had brought to market with their name on them were not designed by them. So in this one, I can't definitively say this is Hobe. I can say I've seen a set just like it that has Hobe. The good part of this is I love this so much, this is in my own collection. But I just wanted to make you aware that you might find something that is signed Hobe. You don't have the signature on yours and it's kind of questionable on whether you can call it Hobe or not. I just want to thank you for joining um, this video and I hope that you've seen a lot of Hobe jewelry and you get a better feel for some of the things that you might find yourself on your adventures. Um, this last piece that I want to show you is just, I think it's just a fun example. The pearls are they're not glass, they're just a plastic glass. They do use the rondelles that we've seen in some of the other Hobe jewelry. But this one, I love the design of it. I think it's really unique. I think it is a, a necklace that takes care of the I hate my neck syndrome. So it goes around your neck and then it, it drapes. But just another lovely example of, of Hobe jewelry and some of the things that you may find in your adventures. If you stay for just a little bit, you're gonna see Again, like on all my videos, you'll see resources for more study on Hobe and also um, the, the page that shows you all of the potential signatures. So thanks for joining and we'll see you next time.